Well, today we're looking at a six-wheel drive Land Rover Parenti Ambulance and we're going to deal with the case of the missing shock absorbers. These were removed because one shock absorber, namely the driver's side one, uh, the bush had disintegrated and fallen out altogether and it was pounding against the axle. I went to find, try and find some other replacement ones. But the Pedder's shocks are not known for their quality and uh, these ones are still in good nick. So these are going back in till I can find a new OEM set. In the meantime, we do need to fix up these ends and clean this up. This should have two flats on here that allow us to get a spanner around it. The way these nuts were rusted on, it was basically impossible to get them off without shagging that. I uh, overheated these nylock nuts till the nylon bushes came out. Uh, but we can see here these, this is what used to sandwich the bush um, on the lower driver's side. And this is kind of what they should look like. The ones we did get out, these are the top ones. These ones got a little bit overheated when I had to use them heat to get the nut off. But in any case, we've got all our caps in here. So I think we should take these out in the shed and give them a wire brush and uh, put a bit of anti-seize on them and then uh, try and get some new bushes on. You know, it's such a sunny day, I might work in the sun. It's about 32 degrees Celsius at the moment out here. Well, my temperature gauge on the house may be a little different from the official position. All right, I think these are about as clean as I'm gonna get. This gives you a look at one the way it should be with two flats and a nice clean thread. These uh, were not in good condition. This is the better one of the two. There's still some flats on it. Now, the force required to get this off is starting to actually collapse that. Um, the lower one in this one, the one that's been hammering against the axle is actually mushroomed over. The thread is shagged. Um, yeah, this is gonna come off as soon as I can get some new ones. So I'm just going over my bushings here. This one's got a lot of grease on it. They could probably stand to have a clean up. This one's got a little bit of rust on it. This one's okay, that's a flat one. This one's got a flat lip on it. I think that might have been eaten out because somebody's put the wrong bush in the wrong spot. This one looks a bit rusted, but I think it's okay. It's just a bit of leftover rubber or silicon on that. That one's good, good. That's one of those guys. That's one of those guys. That one's still good. That's one of those guys. Still good. Ah, here you go. This one's flogged out a bit too from it moving around. So I might cycle them around a bit and make the best of it. So what do we got here? So we've got six of those. So they're obviously the end of the rams. The rest go on the top and bottom of the bushes. Now I've got to take things slow because my uh, neighbors decided to nuisance trip my doorbell at one o'clock this morning. So I haven't had much sleep. And tomorrow is my uh, next trip to the chemo ward for MS treatment. And I hate working with dirty items. So we're gonna clean them all. I'm gonna give them a good soak in that for a bit. And then we'll give them a rinse off and sit in the sun to dry off. A bit of water to the degreaser. They're looking considerably cleaner now. There is one here with some black stuff on here that uh, when I got it on my hands, nothing would get it off. I ended up using grit mitts, so great stuff. They make a liquid stuff and they've sponsored me in the past. So uh, it's good stuff. And if you uh, see that in the video, uh, go and let them know. It's made by an Aussie company called EnviroFluid. Let them know I sent you. Now something else I did is I took the turrets off because they were looking a little rusty sandblasted them or at least my senior technician senior engineer sandblasted them for me i did zinc gel coating on it uh, which is about a 90 percent zinc paint and then i put black epoxy metal finish over the top so it should be about as robust as it comes so the turrets should be all right for a couple of years to come now i live in a small rural town and there's a number of mechanics and a number of auto parts shops you know the one thing literally nobody had was rubber bushes this is like literally the last pack in town. Now I'm taking a bit of a guess here, but these bigger ones, and there are two different sizes of these, these ones fit in the bottom of the spring and they centralize nicely. 
So that is going to be important. You don't want your shocker moving around. So that's what that's important for. These ones with a lip, I find that from the inside, that lip fits inside the hole at the top of the strut tower. So when they're on the inside here, I think these guys are meant to centralize at the top. I think if I have a look at things, they'll be just enough to handle that. I think there should be six if that's the case, which I think there is. According to this, I have seven like that. That's because it's one of those. All right, this job just got a lot more frustrating. I'm missing exactly one bush and two of those washers. That's exactly what I had in my pocket when I was walking around trying to find replacement stuff. So I've probably taken them out of my pocket and put them down somewhere. And uh, with all this fatigue, completely forgotten where. All right, well I found one more. And the missing bush is probably because one had disintegrated and disappeared completely. So uh, I think we're going to have to come up with a workaround for one bush. Hopefully that will clean the thread up enough. I'll put a new nut on in place of that one. So I went and had a look at the uh, repair parts schedule, the RPS. As best I can interpret from the diagrams, this is how these bushes go on. So that's how the big one at the bottom and the little one at the top. I think that's how they go. All right, now I think, given previous experience, I think I can probably just drop this down all the way in the bottom there. And I should be able to drop this through the washer. Okay, I think that's what I'll do with the other side. All right, it's around to the front passenger side. As the usual, the RAF wants to do a flyover. So, we're under the front here. Something suddenly occurs to me here. There's probably not enough room for two washers and a bush down there. These bushes are slightly thicker. This job is going to get more and more complicated, you watch. Right, we can just get that to thread on. So we've got a washer on the top. Uh, we've got a bush top and bottom. We've got a washer on the, on the top and bottom of that one. We're missing out on one on this. Now this is where I'm going to need to use the chain strap go around the top of the cylinder or hold it with my fingers and turn the top of the strut which is why we grease those bushes all right i think i've got it far enough that the nylon um, bushing inside the nylock nut has taken up on the thread which means it won't rattle off it's on significantly firmly now so i don't think that's coming off which is good and there's a lot of pressure on those bushes they're not going to rattle up and down easy that's the first hardest bit it's the second hardest bit which is the other side now camera angle might be a little wonky here it's because i need it to stay out of the way of my hands my multiple sclerosis is of course heat sensitive now let's see if we can get this on here to get this to work but let's see need to get it to take up a couple of threads I think it's just done that awesome so same deal as before we're um, omitting the washer at the bottom here um, just simply because there's not enough room all right this one's on just enough to take up the, uh, the nylon bush so uh, I'm saying bush a lot in this in any case um, I will be checking on these after I've done a couple of K's in them. But I guess for now we do the tops. Right, we're on the top of the passenger side. And I'm going to guess one of these small ones goes on there. Give this a bit of a wish up with a bit of grease. It's going to become my grease screwdriver. That one goes on. And then I guess because it's going to need to centralise and locate, Need one of these guys on top of the strut tower. 
turns in like so. I'm going to need an 8mm spanner in a bit. Again, we're going to have the same problem on the top. It's not enough room for the bottom bush. That kind of solves a problem and it kind of makes a problem as well. Um, mainly because I'm going to have to uh, <laughs> omit a washer, but it does give me the opportunity to not use some of the chopped out washers, which are probably just as bad as nothing anyway. A couple of young mug pies are over in the tree over there. And uh, one of them was trying to undo my shoelaces the other day while I was under here. Um, one of them got himself stuck earlier and I had to let him out. And it's good to hear him warbling away over the back there. I feel happy. They're trying to imitate the uh, ambulance siren. Let's see. That's a good feeling when it goes on that quickly. Now we need to push this down and around the brake line there onto the studs under there. And while it's on the studs and before it pushes itself back up again, we've got to get a lock nut, uh, a lock washer and a nut. Okay. Now I've got two of them on, I can take a breather. A lot of this stuff is done by feel and I think I've got that nut upside down. I've got this on backwards because that clip should be over that side to hold the brake line. All right, driver side time. Screwdriver is definitely getting progressively more covered in grease. But I had a big delivery from um, Envirofluid just arrived and it's some industrial, 20 kilos of industrial uh, hospitality grade uh, laundry detergent. Gonna do the same thing here. That little hole goes inwards because I've got that backwards on the other one. So I need this thing to be mobile at least for a short space of time. Now while I'm under here, I'm looking at the power steering box because this is a six wheel drive, it has power steering. There's lots of oil coming off that. I've probably got a shagged line somewhere or a seal that's crooked, so that'll be the next thing is look at power steering. Here we go. Alright, so the heat's getting the better of me. I've broken the back of it. Still got some more bits to assemble. I'm due at the chemo ward tomorrow, but what I might do for now is just give it a quick test. I'm going to have a uh, a rest and something to eat and try again in a bit but oh yeah we can't bounce the front anymore it's nice and stiff okay so we're back to passenger side again we're gonna put this cover back on and I don't know what this mystery relay is for I think that was uh, when the ambulance siren module was making the headlights alternate I had to change it. Now comes the bit I don't look forward to. And that is the overflow bottle holder. Okay. Stick that on the back of the bolt. Bolt becomes magnetic, but aluminium does not. And nut tries to stick the back of bolt. worry this thing's going to short the battery out. One of those will probably do. Okay, 
I think we're finally done. We'll get the keys and see if it starts. So we're showing 26.7 on the rear and 12.6 on the front. That's good. We can probably start it. However, I think I'm not going to bother. That's going to be two days from now, me. I am just exhausted. Hmm. That's my uh, launch pad for my drone that's all bent up. All right. I need a break. I hope this was interesting. And uh, I hope I haven't made too many of you cringe with the shortcuts I've taken here. But please keep in mind, it's a temporary arrangement until I get brand new shockers and all the correct bits. But uh, where we are, I needed to have this thing rolling in time to get the wheel alignment done. And uh, this was the only way I could do it with locally available parts. So, uh, see you in the next one. Hopefully post wheel alignment and wheel rotations.